Today's tutorial might be a little more technical than a uh, majority of my um, uh, music, uh, music Monday tutorials. We're going to get into some command line stuff, so I apologize if that isn't what you're into. Um, but I thought this was kind of interesting and I thought I'd share it. Now we've worked with MIDI files before in programs such as LMMS and uh, Rose Garden and um, I'll soon be doing a lot of tutorials on a program called Q-Tractor which is a great little MIDI uh, and track recorder program. Um, but let's say you just want to play a MIDI file from the command line. Well, there's a very commonly used program called Timidy, I think is how you say it. And all you have to do is type in Timidy and the name of a MIDI file, which I have uh, uh, down in it from Nine Inch Nails that I downloaded offline. Uh, and if we hit enter, it will start playing the MIDI file using Timidy's default instruments. Um, there are some issues with that. I'm not very thoroughly uh, knowledgeable on Timidy, but by default it uh, all has a limited number of tracks and a song like Down In It has like 14 tracks I think it uses of instruments and Timidy, uh, as you'll see when I play it, won't play all those instruments because it doesn't have instruments for all those uh, that number of tracks. It also seems to try to play um, uh, out on the screen if there are lyrics in the MIDI file it will try to display them but it seems to only do the first few uh, words of each verse. Once again I'm sure there's options that you can modify all this in Timidy um, but let's just have a look at it real quick. Now as you can see it has um, multiple tracks here and depending on how the um, designer of the MIDI file, let me kill that, it's hard to think while the music is playing. The uh, designer of the MIDI file labels each track. It's common for them to label them as the instrument they are, which is good to know. By default, or not by default, but as a standard, um, track 10 is usually designated for drums, so that's good to know when we're going to choose our own instruments here in a moment. You'll also notice that Timidi says that um, uh, this instrument not be heard because there are some instruments that Timmy doesn't have that this MIDI file is looking for. Also, when we got to the first verse, you can see it started putting out the um, the words for that verse. Um, once again, Timmy probably has a lot more options. That's all I really ever do with it. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to connect my MIDI file to my own synthesizer. I, I, I like using ZYN add sub effect. If you watch my Music Monday tutorials a lot, you know that uh, that's probably my favorite synthesizer. Now that could probably could be done with Timidi, but we're gonna look at two other applications today. The first one being called PMIDI, which should be in your repositories. And if you do PMIDI dash dash help, it gives you a simple little help file. This is a very basic program. Basically the usage is um, PMIDI and you have options of P, L, and D. P is when you connect it to a certain MIDI port, L will list out all available ports, and D will be the delay when the MIDI file ends. If you want a, uh, the program not to close for a certain number of seconds, have a little bit of delay, that's what the D is for. So first things first, to play we need to know what ports we want to connect to, which we would use dash L. So if we do P MIDI dash L, it will list out all our available ports we can connect to. Some of them will be uh, if your uh, audio card has uh, MIDI capabilities built into it. Other ones might be programs like Timidy that uh, you have running in the background. Also, um, if you have hardware, like I have a USB MIDI keyboard right here, which itself does not have a built-in synthesizer, so if I connect to that, I'm not going to hear anything. But um, some keyboards do have built-in synthesizers and instruments, so you could connect and play it through your MIDI keyboard. Um, I also have uh, packages and rack rack, which I'm actually using as far as connecting things to record. And of course, my ZYN add sub effect that I have open here, which is what I want to connect to. Now, if I open up another session of ZYN add sub effect, uh, it would just add it here. It would be a, a different um, port number for that one. But anyway, let's go ahead and connect this MIDI file to uh, ZYN add sub effect. So we just do P MIDI dash P. And I forgot to mute my phone, I apologize. And, um, silent, okay, sorry about that. So we're gonna connect to this port, which is our ZYN add sub effect port, and we are going to then just give it what MIDI file to play, which is the down in it MIDI. So P MIDI, the port we're connecting to, and the, uh, the MIDI file we wanna play. Now, when we start playing this, um, by default, in ZYN Add Sub Effect, the only instrument that's enabled is the first one. 
and the rest are, are disabled and they all will have the default synthesizer. So we're going to have to enable them and add uh, and change the instruments to what we want. So go ahead and we'll hit enter. We don't hear anything, but if we click on panel window here, you can see that some instruments are playing. As I said, track 10 uh, is a standard of the um, default um, drum track. See, the music playing just throws me off. Okay, drum track, so we'll turn that on and we can actually just click inside this box here and opens up our instruments window here. And we can go to drums, ZYN add sub effect has one default drum kit. And there we go, we're playing it. Now, the next thing we can do is just start enabling all these instruments. Let's enable them all, although I think, I wanna say the song uses 14 tracks. Right now, besides the drum kit, they're all using the default synthesizer. Let's go ahead and start changing those up a bit. So all we have to do is, when you click inside this box here, it makes that uh, instrument active, and then we can just start changing them. And you just play with them so you get how you like them. Obviously at this point you can control the volume of each instrument individually, you can control the panning of it individually, you can edit the entire instrument. When you click on one here, you can come over here and add effects if you want to add choruses or echoes to that instrument. You control the master volume of all instruments with the master volume control obviously. And do all your regular ZYN add sub effects stuff. Now at any point I can kill this. Uh, the P MIDI, but I still have ZYN add sub effect running. And uh, if we start playing another MIDI, those settings are all still running and we can save those in ZYN add sub effect. So if we have a, instruments that we'd like, uh, we can um, save that and come back. Let's go ahead and add some instruments here that I missed. Now quickly I want to show you another program that if you were to search for this online you'll see a lot of people recommending called A Play MIDI, which is almost identical to P MIDI. You can see it has basically the same options, list, uh, port, and delay, and works the same exact way. Uh, one issue I have with this, and maybe there's a way to make it work different that I'm unaware of, but A Play MIDI, when you list out all the ports, it's missing some. See, let me do P MIDI here. And the higher ones, like our ZYN add sub effect, um, and our rack rack and Patage um, are listed. But then if we do A MIDI dash L, those aren't listed. Now A MIDI play can still play, or A play MIDI can still play to um, uh, that instrument. Just for some reason, the listing of ports doesn't list them all. But same thing if I do A play MIDI dash P and I use port for our ZYN add sub effect and give it our down in it file, it still works. So um, that's why I use P MIDI, really the only reason to one over the other. And once again, we can control C to kill that. If you do get um, a note stuck like so, which seems to be slowly fading out, it's just the way that instrument is, but you can always hit panic that will kill all instruments. Now, another thing I wanna show you real quick is um, taking that MIDI file and saving it to an audio file or a WAV file. Well, ZYN add sub effect has a built-in recorder. So all I have to do is come here, I'll go up to record, choose a WAV file. I'll go to the folder I'm working in here and I'll call it um, down in it.wave and we'll click OK. And then we can click record here. Now you notice I click record and then I'll come over here and then I'll press uh, play here with our A play, A play MIDI.
and then I can hit stop. Now that stops the recording, not the playing, so I can come back here and hit control C. Now I can open that up with Totem, or any music player that I like. And as you can see, it was recorded to a WAV file. Now you may also have noticed that when I originally hit the record button, it was a few seconds until I started playing the MIDI file. Well, the record feature in ZYN adds effect takes effect when the first note is hit. So you can hit record and still be getting things set up so you don't have that delay at the beginning of your audio file, which is a nice little feature. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Hope it wasn't too technical for some of my uh, music viewers. Um, but um, once again, very useful. Obviously, you can just play MIDI files um, using some other program like uh, uh, Totem, if you have the right plugins installed, will play them through Timidy. And uh, there's other graphical applications, obviously, for just playing MIDI files. But if you want the nice little control uh, using ZY and AdSub effect, this is one way of doing it. Uh, and you can connect it to different programs and such. So I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There is a link in the description. And I hope that you have a great day.